Hi there, the Edge Technology Company sent me a power bank for review. This is the X100, which with 97 watt hours stays just below the 100 watt hour limit. According to the UK Civil Aviation Authority, such a battery can be bought on planes as carry on luggage without needing prior airline approval. If you are interested in getting it, I leave a link in the description of this video. In the box is the power bank that looks very cool with its transparent cover. A soft pouch for carrying. And a manual in Chinese and English. Pressing the one and only button on the side turns it on and a bright screen comes to life providing a lot information about what the power bank is up to. To familiarize with the X100, here's a section of the manual. I added a few annotations. The screen has five color-coded fields. Purple deals with the onboard LED light. Pink is the DC port, which can be an input for charging the X100 or an output. It uses an XT30 connector and the manual claims it can handle up to 315 watts. Green is the first USB-C port, called C1, which is an output only and limited to 65 watts. Yellow is the second USB-C port, named, you guessed it, C2, which can be an input or output and claims up to 140 watts capacity. The largest portion on the screen is dedicated for the status of the battery, or rather, batteries, since there are six LiPo cells in series in the X100. I will cover each of these screen windows in more detail. And to get it out of the way, here is the rest of the technical data. The X100 is quite heavy, which is in part because of the fireproof metal enclosure. The USB-C ports support nearly any charging format you care to name. C2 supports PD 3.1 up to and including 28 volts 5 amps, which amounts to 140 watts. But I could only test up to 65 watts because I don't have any trigger boards that support this mode. Edge plans to eventually support also 5 amp PPS or programmable power supply, but that will need a future firmware update. The XT30 is supposed to handle a whopping 315 watts, but again I was not able to fully test that with my gear. It certainly handles half of that with no issue. A similar story on the inputs. I was only able to use C2 with 20 volts and 3.1 amps because of my USB charger is limited to 65 watt and PD 3.0 and a similar issue on the DC input where my LiPo 6S charger would not allow more than 2.1 amps. These are limitations caused by my test gear, not the X100, but it means I can't confirm the stated numbers. The X100 has a transparent cover and I thought you might be interested in a closer look. There we have the area left of the screen with the two USB-C ports and the LED. The chip you see handles the PD protocols. Immediately on the right of the screen we have a couple of MOSFETs. And further to the right, more MOSFETs and the XT30 DC port. You notice the absence of any visible microcontroller running the firmware and a battery charge controller. I suspect that these are hiding under the TFT LCD screen. The X100 is operated by single and double clicks on the button and the occasional long press. Right from the start, a double click gets you into the system menu. Here you can see the firmware version, currently 600A. Set discharge and charge thresholds and limit the maximum charge power to something between 125 to 145 watts. The auto off time was originally set to 20 seconds, which is when the power bank is not used to save battery. I set that to 4 minutes, but you can go up to 999 minutes. TFT DIR means you can rotate the screen, it's currently at 0 degrees. The C2 PPS and OUT DC settings need a firmware update to become active. I first charged the power bank to full using the C2 port and a 65 watt charger which worked with no issues. I then discharged the X100 using C2 into my electronic load using 20 volts as voltage and 2 amps, in other words 40 watts. Interestingly, as soon as the capacity dropped to 10% remaining, the battery part of the window turns red as a warning which is very visible and I like the idea. 
to my surprise, the discharge did not stop right away when the capacity in the battery window reached zero, but it kept going at 40 watts for at least a minute or two longer. When it finally stopped, I selected the battery window and double clicking it gives full details of the six cells and their balancing. The X100 keeps track of the battery charge and discharge cycles, of which there is now one, and the battery health, which is 100%. It also claims it was charged with 109 watt hours. The CHRG or charge value is only for DC charging and the two time values are time to full and time to empty. Not sure why the time to empty still shows 0.7 although the battery is now empty. But these values are of course only estimates anyway. My electronic load registered about 5 amp hours and 99 watt hours. The wires going to the electronic load were quite long and there is a PD trigger board in between as well, so it's understandable that the voltage drop has reduced the watt hours seen by the electronic load slightly below 100. Next I recharged the X100 again using C2, but this time I monitored voltage and current. You can see that the battery window color changes back to blue when it goes to 11%. As the charge reaches 100%, I switch to the detailed battery status. I show this accelerated and you can see the current winding down as the cells reach their fully charged voltage. Overall, the X100 states that this time I put in 110.7 watt hours. I monitor the charge using the TC66 USB tester. Overall, the charge took slightly more than 2 hours and the TC66 measured 122.6 watt hours were going in. There are of course some losses because the USB input into the X100 inevitably goes through a boost circuit to allow charging of a 6S battery on voltages as low as 5 volts. And then there is the power to drive the X100 display and processor. Now fully charged. I tried the DC port to draw power from the X100. After a moment of low power testing, the X100 suddenly kicked in and pushed 24.5 volts at 6 amps or nearly 150 watts out of the DC port. That was the maximum I could safely extract without my test gear bursting into flames. As with any battery connected directly without a bug or boost circuit, the voltage drops gradually as the battery empties and especially at the end the drop is quite fast. The discharge curve shows this gradual decline and after about one hour the X100 was completely drained. I recorded the DC voltage and current every two seconds, calculated the watts and then integrated them to get the total of 105 watt hours delivered to the load. That is nearly the 109 watt hours the X100 had registered as the charge earlier. Powering a load via DC connection directly to the battery is obviously more efficient as long as your application can tolerate the decline in voltage. Let's have a closer look at some of those windows. Plugging a load into C2 shows that I'm discharging at 38.4 watts and 20.12 volts. You can get more information by selecting the C2 window and double clicking. We see the voltage, current and watts with more resolution and there is even a graph plotting the three over time. The two values above the graph show the last two usages of the C2 port. Very handy, for example, if you use it to charge some device. You can get the same view for C1 of course, but because C1 is limited to 20 volts and 65 watts total, the scaling of the plot is different. Initially I even missed the voltage plot right at the very top. I plugged a USB soldering iron into C1 to demonstrate the plot of changing current and watt numbers as the soldering iron heats up and eventually reaches a state where only very little power is needed to maintain the temperature. The DC port needs to be turned on manually for either discharge or charging. This is my setup for charging using my good old IMAX B6. After the power is on, the charger can be started when set to 6S LiPo. The IMAX B6 charger is limited to 50 watts, so for S6 at about 25 volts, the current is basically limited to 2 amps regardless of what you select. But for what it's worth, the X100 confirms that we have a 52 watt incoming charge from the DC port. 
With a charger limited to about 50 watts, there's actually no point in using the DC port on the X100. I can charge faster using 65 watts from USB-C. If you plan to use DC charging, get a more powerful charger. Last not least, the LED. When off, it shows the strange text OLM. Only after playing with it did I realize it means zero lumens. A long press with the LED window selected turns it on to apparently 11 lumens. It is totally okay as a working light, but not super bright. The LED submenu offers various options. Somebody had some fun here. After the on, we have twinkle. I would not have called this mode twinkle, more a slow blink, but I guess it's okay. I can't really see what this would be useful for, except maybe if you fly drones at night and you want a beacon to find your location. The next mode is called hazard. Okay, a couple of fast blinks with a pause in between. Moving on to breathe, which does what it says. Okay, now the final mode, Morse, but it's not just SOS, oh no. You can or rather must type in the text that you want to be sent as Morse code. How about Hello World? With just one button, this is an exercise in frustration because short clicks move the cursor but only to the right, go too far and you have to reselect Morse to go back to the left. Long presses start cycling through characters and numbers and it's very difficult to stop at the right moment. Anyway, I run this part of the video faster to not bore you to death and I stopped after hello, forget about world. So here you are, hello in Morse code. In case your Morse alphabet is a bit rusty, I add a cheat sheet. Oh, and by the way, the X100 does not remember your fruit of your labor. Once it turns off, the enter text is forgotten. I like the X100. Even though the new firmware has not been released yet, it's already the most capable power bank I have played with. Its menus and submenus provide a lot of useful and detailed information, allowing you to see what's going on. Perfect for nerdy people like yours truly. Thanks again to Edge Technology for sending it in. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. There are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up and it would be great if you decided supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon. Thanks for watching.